Okay, so so we're still talking about databases uh, a little bit uh, generically. And then I'm going to talk a bit about a few sort of cancer-specific ones. Uh, so uh, Uniproc KB used to be uh, PIR and SwissProt and so forth all sort of merged together and Tremble. So it's sort of the European uh, databases of protein sequences, which is sort of de facto sort of the standard uh, protein databases that are exchanged worldwide. Uh, they are um, they're actually U.S. funded uh, mostly, not entirely, but mostly, and uh, are include what used to be uh, referred to as SwissProt and uh, Tremble, which was a translation of EMBL, and PIR, which was a protein information resource, which was the first. Uh, bioinformatics database, actually, of protein sequences that dates back to the uh, uh, 60s, actually. And, um, and the importance of, of protein databases and uh, in general could not be overstated in the sense that's where the business end of things are. This is obviously proteins are the things that do all the things that happen in the cell. And um, all the, the analysis we do at the genomic level are really in light of w what impact they have on gene expression, on proteins uh, being expressed, on gene regulation, and so forth. Uh, and so, although we're sequen with next gen sequencing, we're looking at uh, DNA and RNA sequences. We're looking at the, seeing what's happening at the protein end. At the protein database level, that's where we'll have a lot of annotations about the function and, and what the, these proteins do. There's a lot of projection, uh, a lot of similar proteins. A lot of people will speculate that similar proteins have, um, have the same function. Uh, that is true often, but not always. So you have to sort of take that with a grain of salt. And um, the, uh, what's happening more and more, which, re which is really good, is that there's evidence code associated with, with the annotations. And so we are now no what the evidence is for a particular uh, declaration. So if, if we think that this enzyme is such and such, it will be stated because we think it's this because it's similar to another one where it's been proven biochemically that it does this. And so it's through, uh, if it's through similarity or um, uh, identity and so forth, that's, that's sort of through the evidence codes. So the... Um, the, the thing you'll find in the Uniprot record is that there'll be a lot of, of features, and sometimes and some of it is computed, some of it is, is, uh, is uh, real. So in this case, is it just me or is it out of focus? Out of focus. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, I can't do anything about that. I'm not going to start putzing around there. No. Well, no, I think it's okay. Well, maybe. Anyways, so SwissProt, Uniprot, so SwissProt is actually still exists and still referred to and so forth, but it's actually part of Uniprot KB. Uh, and it, the claim to fame of SwissProt is that it was uh, better curated, more carefully uh, annotated uh, records and so forth. Uh, with us, with respect to the human genome and, and with cancer genomics in general, so it's really important to, uh, to know where we are. And so with respect to where genes are, where proteins are encoded, where transcripts are, as there's one reference genome, there's multiple browsers that you probably are familiar with, an Ensemble, UCSC, and CBI genome browser, and these this one, the UCS is probably the most used, Ensemble second, and then CBI genome browser third. Um, the one thing that fortunately they all share is a coordinate system. So the, the coordinate system of the nucleotide sequences is exactly the same between these three if they're referring to the same. They have different version numbers, but there's a one-to-one -one match between uh, the version number. I think on this slide, yeah. So. GRCH37, which is 
the uh, genome consortium uh, coordinate system for human is HG19, and 36 is 18, and so forth. And so those are, it used to be that actually the three browsers had different coordinate system, and that was a big headache. Now they have all the same coordinate system, so that's very, very good. But, so what's the difference between them besides the user interface? Like what? Uh, transcript data. Transcript data. Yeah, transcript data. So, so basically, each one will decide on their own, independent of the other one, what they're going to decorate their genome with, what they're going to annotate. So, which gene set they're going to use to put on the genome, which alternative transcripts they're going to put on the genome. So, you may go look at one genome. You'll find a transcript there. You'll look at the same genome and, and the other browser in the same position and you won't see anything. That's kind of rare. What's more common is that for one you'll look and you'll see three alternative splice variants and you'll look at the other one and you'll see five or ten. That's much more common. So you'll have a lot more, sometimes you'll see the same thing, which is good, but often you'll see differences. And there'll be, uh, so UCSC will incorporate, and Ensemble will both incorporate a lot more external data set, like chip seek data sets, and uh, computed things like similarity between different organisms. UCSC has got is famous for its uh, uh, organisms or tracks and so forth to find for similar organisms. And so, what's important to keep in mind, and is that which um, where you are in the genome and which version uh, you are at. So. As you look at the dates, so HG18 was March 06, HG19 is February 09. When's going to be HG20? When do you think? It says right there, yes, in the yellow box. <laughs> so this summer probably, or sometime later this year, we'll have HG20. So a lot of people are freaking out over this. <laughs> because it's going to be a lot of tools are dependent on a version. A lot of, a lot of every one of the labs you're going to be doing this week is going to be either based on 18 or 19. And so 19 is, is like, uh, sorry, 18 is uh, more than than 12. You know, six six seven years old, and uh, it's still being used, it's still being ref re referred to in papers and so forth. At the ICGC. We make it a rule that everybody has to submit their data on HG19 coordinates, and that's a requirement. But there's TCGA, which was started before ICGC. They have some HG18 data. So there are tools to copy things over from one version to the other, but it's, uh, it's, it's still it's not perfect, and there, there are challenges and so forth. But it's really, really critical that when you record your experiment that as I mentioned earlier, to know your reagents in a database you're referring to is to know which reference system you're using. And so if you're using 19, which I assume you'll be most of the time, you need to indicate that. Okay? So if you go to UCSC Genome Browser, they will have, they also have the history of the various versions. And so you'll see, um, so before 2001, they each had their own assembly. And December 2001, they actually started using NCBI build. So NCBI did a build that everybody uh, used, and so they had the same coordinate system from that point on, which is a really sort of critical and essential thing. And now they're at uh, build, uh, well, it's not build 37 now, but it's basically the same nomenclature, GR, the genome research, uh, the genome uh, consortium. Uh, oops the Genome uh, Reference Consortium, Genome Research, I don't know, Genome Research on the head. Um, so the one thing though that, uh, and there's a hint of it here, so if you go to this page, you'll see that uh, there are patch levels. So GRC H37, they're at patch 12 now. So it means there have been 12 updates to the genome since 2009. These updates have been put, 
so that they don't change the coordinates outside of the updated region. So they don't, the, the bounded, they're, they're sort of their bounded update. So they change everything between the region that they're, so they're not affecting downstream or upstream genes. So things don't move 10 nucleotides over after one of these updates. Within that region, if it's a region that's been updated, things will have moved around. But the things that get updated mostly are our region of, of which have been hard to sequence and hard to assemble. And so like the HLA locus on chromosome 6, the histone cluster, the olfactory gene receptor, and so forth. All these things are the things that are the, ma the things that have been updated over the years. But uh, that said, everybody uses the, the patch zero, basically, of, of the release. Not the first update, but the, the original file. Because that's the only one that doesn't have to deal with alternative variants at any given locus. So, the, for example, the, um, uh, the uh, ABO locus, so the blood type locus, this, and I forget which patch level this year, has multiple alleles of a given locus uh, at that level. So there's variants. And so you get into, and very few software packages are able to deal with multiple alleles at a given locus. And so they're, they deal with fast A files, so they, they're they very happy to deal with a fast A file, which is just a string of, of letters where the next letter is plus one, plus one, plus one, <coughs> as opposed to dealing with uh, graphs where there's a bifurcation and you go one way or you go another way, and then you have two versions of that locus, and then you come back again together, and so forth. So that's a complexity that some software deal with, but most of them don't. Some of them deal, uh, de novo assembly tools deal with the, those kinds of graphs, uh, De Bruyne graphs and so forth, but this is not, uh, most, most, uh, most uh, of these, most algorithms are not be able to, and so they, they use not patch eight or nine, they'll use the, the patch zero, what we call patch zero. So um, a new way of organizing uh, things which is not fully gained popularity yet, but I think it's really sort of starting to our bioprojects and biosamples, which is basically a way of organizing uh, groups of information together. For example, for a tumor project or for the ICGC or for the TCGA, which are these large uh, initiative, there'll be sort of an umbrella project. There'll be separate, uh, let's say, uh, John referred to the pancreas Cancer Genome Project, uh, it's done at OICR today. So it'd be the, the genome sequencing, transcriptome, epigenome sequencing, be different data sets, different samples, and so forth. So it'll be together under one umbrella. So the bio projects uh, is at the NCBI, but actually EBI is also using it, starting to use it. And, uh, and it's actually useful because what happens is sometimes some of these data sets are in different places. So some of it could be at the EBI and some of it could be at NCBI. And, and so, and this bioproject sort of umbrella, which like I mentioned is just starting to, to get utilized, is, um, is going to be able to handle that kind of information. So I'd say you know, sort of keep an eye out for, for, for that kind of information. And so basically an umbrella bioproject will have an accession number and then you'll have under it all the pieces that belong to that project. So, um, so we want to do, you know, get some insights about cancer biology, uh, we're geneticists, we're molecular biologists. There's all sorts of, um, of types of questions that we want to ask and that we'll be asking this week. So we'll be spending some time with clinical data. We'll be spending some time with pathway information. We'll be spending time with uh, Go and with uh, transcriptome and microarray and so forth. So the whole package is, is really, so it's really important to sort of keep track of data, database identifiers and what links to what and who's, uh, how things are related to, to each other. So we talked a bit earlier about uh, HST, uh, Human Express uh, ESTs, which, uh, which are sort of really at the beginning of the Human Genome Project. Uh, then we had the mapping, genome mapping and sequencing, then more population analysis. Genome GWAS, genome-wide association studies were still quite popular, but uh, uh, less so, and, and were, 
they actually were fully open data sets until this the infamous Homer paper came out, which sort of uh, rattled the cage and said, uh, GWAS data, although it's only SNPs across a, a genome, I can actually use that information to re-identify people. And so after the Homer paper, uh, NIH sort of closed the door on GWAS data being fully open and now becoming controlled access data. So the same way as our uh, whole, whole genome. Uh, and so it was a kind of sad day, I think, the Homer paper. <laughs> but uh, it actually happened again recently where they were the... Uh, the thousand genome data was, uh, which was fully consented to be fully open, is some people have managed to re-identify. Uh, they did the bad, naughty thing they're not supposed to do is to try to re-identify the people, but they were able to, to get come quite close with uh, uh, several individuals. So um, the reason they did it is just to, to show how cool and, and smart they were. But uh, they also are causing concerns within uh, sort of the bioethics community. So the Cancer Genome Atlas paper, or uh, sorry, the Cancer Genome Atlas pilot, which was a small project initially to do, I think, 20 or 50 different uh, tumors from a given from two or three uh, tumor types, and it was started about 2006, 2007, and it was the really first. Uh, so whole genome, exome, transcriptome, uh, large-scale analysis of looking at tumor. And it was really a pilot in the sense to see, is this feasible? Can we do it? What are the mistakes we're going to make? How can we correct it? And so forth. And, and they did do some mistakes, and they did learn from them. And uh, the um, ICGC learned from their mistakes and didn't repeat those. So that was, that was very useful from that point of view. But... Uh, the other thing that happened, and this is really sort of beyond the scope of this course, but it's sort of inform an interesting tidbit, is that the, the TCGA was actually separate from the ICGC, and it was, a, uh, it was actually politics within the NIH between the NCI and NHGRI, and they weren't talking to each other nicely and so forth. And now that's all changed, and they're all, we're all friends. And now TCGA is actually part of ICGC. And so there's the big, as, as uh, John showed this morning, the map. So they're all the uh, US project, they're all TCGA projects, and they're all part of the ICGC consortium. And so it's a large scale. So the ICGC is truly international from, uh, I think, every continent except Antarctica is represented and uh, is a sort of large scale project where we'll be sequencing 25,000 cancer genomes. The, I'd say the TCGA is going to represent about, um, I want to say more than a third, and yeah, more than a third, less than half of all ICGC will come from the TCGA project. And there's the 1,000 Genome pro Project, which uh, is also very interesting and for which a lot of uh, variant calling software has been developed on and so forth. But with the one big difference that this project has compared to these other projects is that the 1000 Genome Project does not have any phenotype data. So that's the big thing that the TCGA and ICGC bring to the table is clinical information about the samples and uh, uh, whether or not the, the patients are alive and, and how long they lived and so forth. So that's really sort of a key sort of a contribution a new space that uh, uh, this data sets are bringing in. So I showed this slide. Yes? Yes. Healthy? Yeah. Yeah, so they're normal. Yeah. At the time they were harvested. But, but if they changed, if they became sick, we wouldn't know about it because there's no reporting back of that kind of data. It's not a bad data set, and it's, it's actually a very nice data set because it is open also. So that's a, even, that's a, that's a big plus. Uh, but it's, it, does, it, it is normal. Uh, I think, I think we, have, we, have, we know the sex of the person, but you can go figure that out yourself. And we know the ethnic background because you can go figure that out yourself. And... Uh, and I think we know that the, the parameters in which whatever they define as normal, so they're within those bounds at the time of, of the, where the DNA was collected. Yeah. 
So I talked about the various controlled and open data sets. This is uh, the portal. I'm, I'm not going to spend much time on this, um, except to say that we at the OICR are doing a major rewrite of this. And come September, you will not recognize this website. And so uh, we're changing the technology, the, the way it is built, uh, the user interface, uh, everything about it. So I don't, I'm not going to uh, spend too much time, except that in the circled area there, it says download data. So that part will be there. And actually, that's still, it's going to be, th that data is going to be what's used to build a new website as well. So it's going to be the same data. It's just it's going to be a user, different user experience in the way it's organized. And the, the idea, the, one of the main concerns we had about this site and why we Actually, for the last year now, we've been sort of working on a, on a redesign, is that it wasn't going to be able to scale up to the amount of data that we we're expecting in the years to come. And so we're at about 5,000 genomes now, and we're expecting 25,000. It wasn't going to scale up to, to the multiple sites. So we had to, to, it's a new architecture, new everything in the back end. And so we're not going to, you can go look at it, you can go do queries and things like that. It's pretty intuitive. Uh, so those of you that know Biomart, it's at the Biomart back end right now, and so the, it's, it's like all the other marts. But on the, if you go to uh, the, the click download data, it brings you to the FTP directory, and right there you see uh, 12 versions right now of, of data sets. So each version has what was in the previous version plus the new stuff. So each version is actually cumulative with the, with the new data set that's been added. And so if you go then from this side, you go either to the current one or the latest one, which is version 12, it takes you to uh, this site, which lists all the current projects right now that have submitted data. And then if you click on any one of those projects, you then see the files that are available for that given project. And this is uh, the, the OICR pancreatic cancer data set. And uh, if you click, let's say there's a single, simple SSM, simple mutation, si simple uh, somatic mutation, SSM, then you get a table that sort of looks like this, which has uh, assembly versions, chromosome numbers, chromosome starts, so forth. And so if actually you go to the next slide, it has 49 columns and uh, the first column is a cancer type, and so forth. So these are the numbered columns that you have in that table. There's actually more data represented here than there is on the, if you go to the website itself and use uh, the MART, there's some columns which are, are not present. And so this, the, the raw data, which is very, very much not raw, it's very much process data. This is interpreted process data where we think the mutations are the somatic mutations. So this is all open data, right? Somatic mutations are open. They're not germline mutations. So germline mutations don't exist. This is a table tab delineated uh, uh, format. So uh, does it say, no, it doesn't say on this one. And, um, and it has the mutation, it has the genes, it has and so on and so forth. And, uh, <laughs> And then we're going to work with that a little bit uh, later today. But that's to give you an idea. So that's what's available at the ICGC for every tumor type. Um, so this actually this is the same piece I mentioned earlier about the importance of if you find an error. And actually, I just remove you know GenBank is failing in any database. If you discover never a report to the database, it should be re rectified and so forth. Another really sort of um, very well curated uh, database is COSMIC, which is uh, so the catalog of somatic mutations in cancer. The, uh, the thing you have to be very much aware about COSMIC, it's been around for, I'm trying to, I think, about eight or nine years, maybe almost 10. And initially, what it did is it read, uh, so the curators of a team of about four or five curators would read uh, cancer papers that had uh, mutation data, and then it would sort of tabulate it in this, in, in this database. Initially, what 
in the pre sort of whole genome analysis days, what people did is they would go sequence uh, BRAF in a thousand individuals. So just that one gene and get data for that one gene and they'd ignore the rest of the genome. And here, they would and put that in this database. So that, that kind of data is, is in Cosmic. In Cosmic also you'll have whole genome analysis where they sequence every gene and then tabulate all the mutations from those genes and then put it in this paper. But if you count all the mutations, what's the most frequently mutated gene in Cosmic? Lo and behold, BRAF is at the top of the list, right? Because there's a lot of targeted sequencing efforts that are part of, of Cosmic. And so you can search, so the, the, the Cosmic user interface allows you to search for one and not the other and so forth. But we're going to do uh, another exercise this afternoon where we can look at, let's say, so in, in the Cosmic people come and get data from, from ICGC. So they'll get the whole genome data from ICGC and then incorporate into COSMIC. So COSMIC is a curation, but it's useful if you're interested in BRAF, you want to see all the mutations that were ever done on that gene, this will be a good place to go look at, right? So, um, so there's lots of different tumors, lots of different mutations and so forth. There's how many genes in the human genome? Probably close to 21,000. So every gene in the human genome is mutated in cosmic and so uh, so there's lots of there's lots of very lots of very nice data it's a, it's a really uh, good work there but also available at uh, at cosmic is a table which has all of the data and so you can from oh, I don't have the URL anyway so you can go find this is a URL up there uh, you can go find basically all of the. Uh, I have the file. Uh, let's see, uh, Cosmic uh, Complete Export Version uh, 64. So the fourth line from the top. So that file we have uh, on here, and we can uh, we're going to be working with that file. So uh, I'm going to skip that. I already talked about that. Oh, yes. So basically, uh, so basically at the ICGC, there's Cancer Genome Project pages. Uh, there's the, uh, the, the DCC I talked about. And there's also uh, the DACO, which is the place where you apply to get access to this data. So if you want to have access to the BAM files, if you want access to the germline information, then you have to get a DACO approval. And in DACO is, a, is a, as scary as the name sounds, DAC, Data Access Compliance Office. There are DACO officers, in, uh, which are lawyers and bioethicists, well, which will grant you permission to, to this data. So you fill out the form, you submit it, and it says the same. Has anybody ever gotten access to dbGaP? Sort of a similar scale sort of uh, a pain. <laughs> And uh, so you have to identify yourself on the website. You have to fill out details about contact information and what your project is going to be. Do you have the right IT infrastructure for keeping the data secure? And you have a data access agreement, uh, um, REB or, or whatnot. And then you fill out the form. And so this is how you log in, fill out the form. Here's the form. If you don't fill it out, it's all red. If you fill out a property, you get all green marks, and you're good for you. And then you, you get a PDF, you print it. Then you get it signed by that person that's going to fire you if you ever digress, right? So, I, so for example, it would be for us at the OICR, it would be uh, Tom Hudson, or the president of OICR, would sign off and saying, yes, these are all legit scientists within the OICR. And, uh, you know, if, he's, if he, Francis ever tries to re identify somebody will we'll fire him. So I haven't done that. Anyway, so and then uh, the problem, so one problem is that we actually don't have all the data at OICR at the ICGC. We're actually working with our friends at the EBI. So the TCGA data is at dbGaP. Actually, that's an old slide. It's now at, where is it now? Anybody know? It's not DBGAP anymore. 
where is it? Cancer, human cancer genome data at, in the U.S. CG Hub. Have you ever heard of CG Hub? Yeah. So CG Hub is a new data center in, uh, at the UCSD, San Diego. And it's actually, it's confusing because it's actually David Osler from UCSC, the guy that does the genome browser. He actually maintains the cancer genome, the CG Hub at UCSD. So it's now, but it's basically the same sort of validation and, and dbGaP sort of permissions and so forth that gives you access to that. Then you have access to the BAM and to the, um, to the uh, germline VCF files and so forth. And on the ICGC side, which is also includes them, it's, in, it's actually held not in, uh, in the US, but in, uh, in Europe at the EGA, at the uh, um, Genomic Archive. And so, uh, unfortunately, these two paths are not, it's, they're not a single path, so you have to get permission from one and the other to get access to everything. We're trying to fix that but it's not fixed yet. And so right now you have to get this two permission to get the whole data set. If you want to have access to everything, you have to go through both paths. The other thing that's complicated is that very, very few places can go through all of this and get everything and hold it on site. Hence sort of the computing, the, the cloud sort of ideas. There's actually within the uh, ICGC with our friends in the TCGA, we're actually doing a um, pan-cancer experiment where we're going to look at uh, 8,000, I think it is, uh, tumors, full whole genome uh, tumors and across uh, multiple cancer types. And um, we're going to do so at one, uh, we're, we're going to a private cloud uh, where we're all getting permissions right now to be able to, to write, send our files to. And so that we'll be able to compute across multiple cancer types, all of, a group of people all at one place. But it requires a lot of coordination. And, and so if you're looking for one tumor and one cell line or two or three samples worth of DNA, you can just go get them. That's, that's not a problem. But as soon as you start scaling it up to the hundreds and thousands of samples, it's a very few places can do that. So that's it's, it's a bit of a challenge. So some of the... Uh, the cancer data, that's in, in this uh, structured clinical data that we're going to get more, hear more about tomorrow. Um, and uh, basically information about the samples, the treatment, uh, although in this case there aren't any treatments, but ICGC are all collected before any treatment, so there is not treatment per se, but uh, when they were caught in, in their development of the disease. Um, what we're implementing right now, as we mentioned earlier, as I mentioned earlier, the, the sort of bioproject type uh, idea, so that for the ICGC and the TCGA, there'll be projects that are going to be uh, put together. And uh, for example, there's two groups doing pancreatic cancer, so they'll be uh, organized and, and curated uh, together like this. So this is work in development. Uh, quick words about the UCSC genome browser. Um, so UCSC genome browser has uh, many eukaryotic genomes, so it's, it hasn't, it doesn't do uh, prokaryotes per se, although technically it could, except it doesn't really do circular genomes. And um, it's really a useful site for uh, evolutionary and variation data representation, uh, flexible and configuration has uh, graphical and table views, which makes it very uh, easy and uh, useful to export uh, sets of data. And Galaxy, which we're not going to talk about, but Galaxy actually uses this feature of, of this table views that it then incorporates into, uh, it gets data, it uses UCSC as one of its data sources. And you can also upload your own data and share with colleagues or to, with the world. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great app. The, uh, the challenge, one challenge with this genome browser and actually with uh, other 
browsers like IGV and so forth, is that we're dealing with a two-dimensional coordinate system to represent uh, multi-dimensional data. So it's really, uh, that's probably its biggest shortcoming of any sort of uh, genome browser. And so the challenge to uh, interpret, represent, and so forth, uh, very complicated data on a two-dimensional coordinate system is, uh, has not been resolved yet. And so there are people that will jump from here into Cytoscape and so forth, and so there will be ways to represent other types of information, and, and UCSC has, has got lots of different ways of representing graphs and so forth, uh, and both in graphical view and in table view, and it is definitely um, uh, a limitation of, of genome browsers in general, which has not been uh, resolved at this point. A reminder about annotations, that each of these browsers, and they represent um, annotation. And so what's a quick, not 140 characters, but 20 character definition of what a annotations are? What are our annotations? They're kind of like auxiliary information. Auxiliary information, yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. Given biological meaning. Given what? Biological meaning. Yeah, user community. Yeah. So the big thing about annotations, is they're really, they're our interpretation of what we think is present. So it's where we think a gene is, it's where we think a transcript is. It, it's probably correct in most cases. And the good, that, the good browsers like UCSC and, and uh, NCBI and Ensemble are so rich and so well documented and so uh, full of corroborating and supporting evidence that it's probably all true. But it is a, a human interpretation of where a gene starts, gene ends, transcription regulatory site is, uh, similarity exists, and so forth. So it's really, you have, to, you have to sort of keep that in the back of your mind all the time when you're using this information, that it is somebody's interpretation about where to hang this, this feature, right? So, um, so be careful about that. So the data being collected for the ICGC and TCGA and uh, many uh, sort of human genome projects, but specifically uh, cancer genome projects, are phenotype, clinical data, tumor pathology, gender, age, treatment, survival, and so forth. Germline data, so which is controlled access. So this will be uh, the genomic variants, which are transferred uh, in the family. Uh, somatic mutations in a tumor, which are open, and so and these fall in multiple types. You can have uh, single nucleotide variations. You can have uh, short and indels. You can have structural rearrangements, structural uh, large-scale variations, translocations, and so forth. Copy number variation, uh, which is to this day still open data until they uh, prove it to be identifiable, which I'm sure will happen someday. Uh, RNA abundance and splicing itself is, is open, but the RNA sequences are closed because the RNA, the RNA sequences show genetic variants and they could become uh, identifiable, right? And then DNA methylation data, of which there is still, um, it's part of the ICGC to, do, to measure this, but it's still uh, very, very few uh, centers have submitted that. And it's really the, the last one. Uh, to come. So this is just some URLs for you to, to have a look at that's got a lot of the various data types available. Uh, how many of you have used the UCSD genome browser before? Yes, yes. Half, this room has, that room has not. Okay. So we're going to do that, some of that in the lab this afternoon and uh, I will, uh, depending on how much time, we'll, we'll do more and more sort of complicated uh, but here basically was a KRAS, so this is an example. So if you look up KRAS, it's a uh, fairly well-characterized oncogene. You have a number, so you just do a KRAS lookup, 
it, it brings you up. So the first thing that uh, UCSC will do is, is bring you all the various places where the, the, the string KRAS shows up. So you'll have the, the uh, RefSeq reference, which will be the sort of the canonical um, reference. But then you'll have multiple versions of, of various transcripts at the top on that genome of interest. And so you usually start, let's say I was looking at human, so this will be for based for the human. If I start from a dog or from a cat and whatever, then I'll have those, the, 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 where you start from will be the reference and then you'll see the, the other um, references thereafter. And one of the sort of the big things that, uh, that um, UCSC Genome Browser has is that it has all the various data, it's, it's rich, so each, tr each line is called a track. Each track is a data element of certain type, and what you see in the top part is controlled by the, the, the knobs, basically, if you like, that you see in the, in the bottom part. And so, by default, uh, the uh, human, the sort of the various organism similarity, and some of the SNPs and some of the transcripts are shown, but you can go in here and, and turn off and on all the various tracks as you see fit, and then what it is, and then you refresh, and, and you reload a new image at the top. And you can move also within the image as you can move what you want. Uh, uh, it's all sort of uh, uh, very flexible user interface. But then you can basically see uh, representation here, for example, of various RNA, various exons, and, and so forth. So these boxes are the express sequences, this, the, the uh, exon linkers, and so forth. Again, the challenge is uh, showing on a DNA coordinate system things which are, are definitely uh, beyond uh, that coordinate system. Uh, okay. So what time is the coffee break? Three. Okay. Okay. So... Uh, so this week, uh, another tool from uh, that was installed on your computer is a, is a um, IGV from the Broad, which is a um, it's a uh, it's a Java tool that runs doesn't run within a browser, so it runs independently on your desktop, and it can sort of make calls. Uh, obviously over uh, from many different sources, including uh, the Broad itself. And so they will have reference genomes and reference uh, annotations and so forth. And the big sort of, um, sort of gap that uh, IGV, um, one of the gaps that IGV uh, tries to fill is to deal with as a browser of, of next-gen data. But it initially, it was actually built as a browser of microarray data. And it was uh, really a way of integrating a sort of genomic view of large-scale microarray and, and, and eventually uh, RNA-seq and so forth. But now it's actually uh, used by various, lots of different communities in lots of different ways. And uh, many of the, of the instructors this week will use it in their own way, and so they'll show you the way they see fit for them. And so what I'm going to do today is going to do a quick sort of uh, overview of IGV, and um, then we'll uh, have break, and then we'll do some labs, which will include, which will basically going on Amazon, doing some um, sort of Unix uh, file <coughs> manipulation and looking at sort of large uh, records from uh, Cosmic and from ICGC. And so we'll, and we'll look at some of the gene sets. And then some of the gene sets we get out of that, we'll come and look at them in UCSC uh, Genome Browser. So that's, that's what uh, we're going to do for the rest of the afternoon. And then I have till when? Till five? So, as I mentioned, so it's very important for, um, 
for any sort of genome browser, human genome browser, or for, for that matter, any organism's genome browser, to have um, a fixed coordinate set. And so one of the challenges for people that don't do uh, human biology is that they don't necessarily have a reference genome set. This is not our problem. But uh, it's, and so, but what is our problem is to know which reference to, to work against. And so, so if you have some data you're picking up from uh, uh, some older work, it may be against an older version of a genome. And so you will, if you want to compare your work against their work, you'll have, it'll be very important for you to use the same coordinate uh, data system. The one of the strengths of, of uh, IGV is also its ability to read multiple file types. And so uh, I will not, you can go on a website and it'll describe uh, some of these file types I've never worked with. Uh, some I, uh, I, I use uh, uh, often, but, but basically uh, BAM, BED, BED graph, big with, they're all sort of from UCSC, the, except for the BAM, which is uh, uh, the uh, binary version of the SAM file, which is another file type here, which is uh, the sequence alignment uh, format in VCF and so forth. So they're all uh, various uh, files used by uh, many different tools as input or outputs, and, uh, and this tool is able to, to compute on and format and, and export in, in many of the other formats as well. One of the, uh, so main formats that we're going to look at this week will be uh, the BAM file format, which is a the binary version of of, uh, of, of SAM, which is the, the text version of the alignment. Basically, once you've mapped your reads against the genome, you then have a coordinate system of the read against uh, the reference genome. And so that, uh, from there, you can then do various analysis to uh, see polymorphisms, to see germline variants, to see structural reorganizations, and so forth. And so. Uh, many of, of, uh, of the things we, we want to do are possible. The um, IGV, has here, for, for example, if we look at a whole uh, chromosome view, can uh, allow uh, to, to look at different uh, data types and different clinical uh, uh, parameters, which is what is not very viewable here, but it's more in the, in the paper that I also attach with the the lecture, and it allows you to, to look at uh, uh, copy number of changes and, and amplifications and so forth. So there's lots of different data types. Um, as I mentioned before, data and databases will uh, uh, is really important for you to understand where things are from. And so there's actually uh, there's a lot of things we're going to learn this week. But there's a lot of things that uh, we you'll have to go discover yourself after you. We've teased you with too much information this week. And uh, with respect to next-gen sequence analysis, Seek Answer is actually uh, a, a good source of, of information. Another one is, what's it called again? Bio, bio, no, C, no, C, that's not that one I'm thinking about. Uh, Seek, not Seek Answer, but the other. Biostar, thank you. Biostar, yes. Biostar is the other one which I used to add, I have another version of the slide which I forgot to include here. So my apologies. I'll add it on the, on, on the wiki. But it's actually taking over, I'd say. Biostar is, 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 is uh, more up to date and more. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so. As I mentioned, uh, IGV can do a lot of things, mutation analysis, copy number variation, uh, gene expression, uh, lots of different data formats. And so you can have the portal here for uh, the description of all the various data formats I talked about. So uh, do I want to do this now? Uh -huh. You're saying yes. I'm saying no. Uh, <laughs> Actually, I want to do I want to do the other lab first. The rest of the, I'm going to jump. I'm going to reorganize my lecture notes a little bit. So I'm going to jump. I'm going to come back to this after we've done uh, some of the lab 
And so we're going to skip some slides. Actually, we're going to go to, we're going to stop now. Okay, so I'm going to do a little change of pace here. So we're going to go back to the IGV lecture. And um, really, I think um, the best thing will probably be for me to go through these lectures. And, and some of you may want to try it, or we could. Uh, are you, Anna, are you using it tomorrow? Do you use IGV? No, you're not. Okay, so it won't be used till Wednesday, I think. I'll have my schedule here. Uh, and I'll be back on Wednesday, so I'll, I'll, I won't be here tomorrow morning, but I'll be here probably tomorrow afternoon, and then I'll be back on Wednesday for sure. So I'm going to be here most of the week. Uh, I apologize ahead of time. <laughs> I'm a good heckler in the back. I sort of bug the other instructors. <laughs> Wednesday slip? Huh? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Um... Okay, so so the first thing when you uh, you start IGV is uh, you have to select a genome, and for the uh, the very important reasons I already explained many a times, and so uh, on the left panel here you you select and there's a bunch of other genomes available, uh, MMs for mouse mus musculus and, and and so forth and HG for human Homo sapiens human genome. Um, so you choose your genome from the list and import, or if you have your own genome file, you have a different one. If you have HD20, if you have a pre-release of HD20, for example, you can import it there. Uh, then uh, the alignment file, so load from files. So you can also download files from a URL, from a DAS server, uh, and uh, basically like things like um, uh, lots of various... And a sample file source is, is available here or FTP from here from from uh, from the broad. And so you can so again so file load from file and then you you put in the, the file that you want to load. You can have files locally of course, URL servers and so forth. So all the various options uh, here are available. Uh, so the Genomic annotations, these will be the, uh, the equivalent of what I talked about from, that's different from various genomes. It will be the sort of the transcript, where the genes are located and so forth. And so, uh, and that's, actually, sorry, I'm confusing myself here. The, yeah, the BAM file first. So the BAM file is the, um, the binary uh, file with the uh, with the reads, and then select the chromosome. So you can once you a little scary. Well, not scary. Um, when you first start IGV and you load up a chromosome, and you're you're, at the, you're such a high level that you don't see any details, and so it doesn't seem like you're loading anything. So you have to start zooming in before you can see uh, something. So let's say you picked a chromosome, and then you see, uh, and then you're inundated with data. And so, um, so this, if we zoom in some more, then you're starting to see uh, reads, uh, paired reads. So in this case, it's paired, it doesn't have to be paired reads. But uh, this coverage, uh, sort of histogram at the top, and then white reads are low alignment scores. Other colors depends on the color alignment. And you can change the color assignments, what it means. Uh, sometimes color assignment will be Pairing, and as you can see at the bottom here, is you're starting to see you're, you're zoomed in so much that each of these little bars here is actually a nucleotide. So these paired ends, I think if I recall, there's something on the order of uh, they're relatively short, like 35 or 50. And uh, so, and again, so you zoom in some more, and, and the zoom in controls at the top right here. Uh, you see the color, each letter is a different color. Uh, this is the reference sequence. So this is, and then you see difference against uh, the reference. So if there's differences against the, the reference, then they're, they're highlighted. So uh, some more here. 
and then uh, you have a summary uh, at the top here. So, yeah, so I, I talked about so downloading genomic annotation. So one place that's common is UCSC. Uh, it has table formats. So here you can go to the table view. And a table view is an ex explanation on how to get uh, the ensemble gene. You go to UCSC to get ensemble genes. I mean, that's a, it's a little weird, but anyways. It's, uh, it's, there, there are tools that are made to work together. So UCSC works well with, uh, with IGV. And so there's the file format, the, the, the organism you want, the build you want. You got to make sure you match the build of the coordinates assembly that you've selected the annotation again against making sure that, that you're, uh, so these are uh, 16, 18. 18 and so um, then so here you have example of gene models so the more data annotation you load the more memory you'll need uh, and so the I think we informed you to take the the 1.2 gig version of this software when on the instruction page which should be fine for most of the things that uh, we need to do and it will fit it has to fit also with obviously with the amount of memory you have available on your machine um, so, so here's an example of um, tumor normal pair, and where uh, there's a deletion. So this is a, an example of where you'll see a diagnostic sort of uh, upper level sort of views of uh, deletions, insertions, and, and so forth. So this is a deletion. Um, you'll have unmatched pair dens on either side of the deletion, so these red color boxes. And uh, so copy number variation. So this is a, uh, I don't think, I'm not sure if anybody's going to be using it this week. Do you know? Saurabh will be? Just just like this. Okay. So Okay. So and then this is just some other places to get uh and I gotta add the uh the last one I talked about. So this is the exercise I told you about to go complete this page. And you can do that now. And this is some of the things that we did in the file. This one here is a space that's no good. So all of these are better on the wiki. They're corrected on the wiki, not on the, on the, and so forth. 